Come, you blessed of my Father, Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Alleluia. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on and earth, earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us every year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate the people called the beautiful gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter, looking intently at him, looked intently at him as did John, and said to him, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither gold, silver, nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand, raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked about, and went into the temple area with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O, o hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, uh, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts, and seek the Lord. And look to the Lord uh, in, in his strength. Uh, seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You, you descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, 
He, the Lord, our, our God, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by, and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them. But their eyes were uh, pre prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? And they stopped looking down downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things uh, that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. How our chief priests and, and rulers both handed him over uh, to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since, uh, since this took place. Some women from the group, however, have astounded us. They were at the term, tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning, beginning with Moses and the, all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it was nearly evening and the day was almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while they were at table, he took bread and, and said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were open, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, uh, where are, Were not our hearts burning within us as he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? And so they uh, set out uh, at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven, and those with whom they were staying. The Lord has uh, truly raised, uh, has truly been raised up and appeared to Simon. Then uh, the two recounted all that had taken place on the way and how they had made known to him, how they had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, about the uh, progress of the church. They're putting up the girders very nicely. Um, and I encourage you, maybe take a, a little bit of a road trip today and g c drive by the church to see the uh, progress that's being made. You can almost see, uh, with very little imagination, how it's going to look, how it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, the size of it and things like that. So if you have some time this afternoon or this evening, 
load up the car and drive by and take a look at the church. It's very nice. Secondly, if you ever go to Emmaus in the Holy Land, I strongly recommend stopping by Elvis Diner. It's the best burgers you'll find in the entire country. And in addition to that, in the basement for a small fee, you can see a very nice museum about the life of Elvis Presley. So strongly recommend that you do that to enjoy the time that you have over there and experience all the a aspects that it has to offer. One thing that I think is very telling, very important in today's gospel reading is what the two men, Cleopas and his companion, were doing as they were walking before our Lord joined them. It says they were walking, discussing, and debating what had happened in Jerusalem. In other words, they weren't just talking academically about it. They were talking about it with fervor, with, things, uh, with, and with emotion. It was something that was coming from their heart. It was something that had touched them and something that was, uh, that was driving them. Indeed, something they had taken into themselves and became part of them, which is why it would have been uh, discussed with emotion and with passion, because it had become a part of who they were. I think there's a little lesson in that for us. We too have to strive to serve our Lord and to follow him and to get to know him, but not get to know him just in an academic sense. Yes, we have to know the church's teaching. Yes, we have to know, uh, you know what, the, uh, what has uh, been handed on to us by the church about who he is and things like that. But we also have to get to know him as a person. We have to get to know him as somebody who is in our lives, somebody who is with us and walking with us. So it's a good idea for us to stop and ask ourselves, if we were, had been walking with those two men, would we have taken a part in the discussion as an intellectual game? Would it have been something that would have been fun to talk about and just something that we would then forget? Or would it be something that would touch our souls, touch our hearts, lead us to a deep, deeper realization of who it is that we know? lead us to a deeper encounter with him. I think it was because of that that our Lord was able to join them because they already had him in their hearts. So he came and joined them physically. Came and joined them physically, walked with them, explained to them the Old Testament prophecies about himself, probably even explained a little bit more than just that. And as they walked along, they were inflamed even more. The more they came to know about the preparation for our Lord, the more they came to love him and to give his heart, their hearts over to him. Until, of course, at the pinnacle, at the, that the summit of it all is the Eucharist. And our Lord does those uh, symbols of taking the bread, breaking it, saying the blessing, and giving it to them. Then he is fully uh, present to them. Not only is he present to them, but they become aware of the presence because of encountering him in this sacramental way, in this very deep and personal way. We too, of course, do the same every time we attend Mass. Our Lord is in our midst. He teaches us about the scriptures. He encourages us to live out the scriptures. And then he breaks the bread, says the blessing, and distributes it to us. So today we should really ask ourselves, is our Lord and our walking with him an academic discipline? Is it something we support because this is how we've been raised our entire lives? Or is it something that we've truly given our hearts and our souls towards? Is it something that is a part of who we are and how can we make it more so? So today as we continue with the season of Easter, we stop and ask ourselves, do our hearts burn when we think about our Lord. Do our hearts catch fire as we try to follow him more faithfully and more fully? And let us pray that we may have the gift of his spirit, that we may walk in our lives with him and invite him to walk in our lives so that as we walk through this world with him by our side, we may be aware of his presence, teaching and guiding. The intention for today's mask, there's no way in the world I'll be able to pronounce that name. Um, it starts with an L and begins with a W. Um, it lo looks like it's probably African. So, uh, Lakawitha wanteth a body, I 
something like that. Anyway, that's who the Mass is going to be offered for. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine which we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, with my humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to God, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and my our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Uh, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, 
and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you, also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, gathering them, uh, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order that our days, uh, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation encountered among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve these offerings in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On this day, before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given them, given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble, prayer we, uh, in humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with a sign of faith, faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen Matthias Barnabas, Ignatius Alexander Marcellinus Peter, Felicity Perpetua Agatha Lucy, Agnes Cecilia Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. communion at Tophan. The disciples recognized the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the, uh, the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits 